Howdy folks, it's Adriel the Hunting Gear Guy, and this is the Type 81. Uh, it's a Chinese firearm similar to an AK-47, but not the same. Uh, this particular model is imported by Tactical Imports into Canada, and the model number is the T81SA, so it's semi-automatic only. And uh, even though it's got this big magazine here in Canada, this is a five-rounder. Um, it's a very interesting firearm. Let's just make sure that we're empty here. Now there's something you wouldn't see on an AK-47, the bolt locks uh, to the rear when uh, it's on the last round, and we're empty here. So let's take a closer look at this firearm. Just starting at the back of this gun. Uh, you know, one thing that uh, that's kind of interesting with this stock, you can put your face in here. Um, it does get you a little bit closer to the receiver here, but I think this is what actually what you're supposed to do is just put your face in here. Um, if you don't feel like putting your face that close and low, you can rest it just over here. Um, but you know, having having kind of like a divot here for your cheek is is not a bad idea. Um, at the rear of the gun, we have a trap door here for your cleaning kit. Um, so it gets a little bit stuck up. Same, my ex has to do the same thing. Um, in the trigger, sorry, in the the. Uh, uh, cleaning kit, we've got a jag, we've got a, a scrubber brush, and we've got a pick as well. So I'm just going to pop that back into the uh, butt. There we go. Moving on to the middle. We've got a plain wood grip. Uh, that's a pistol grip. That's just a grab on there. Um, it's it can be removed through the uh, hole here. So I've seen a couple of different people uh, trying to do different uh, grips on here on uh, Canadian gun nuts. So there are different ways of doing it. I'm just gonna pull this magazine out just while I'm at it. So you can see here. There's the uh, uh, catch right there, and that just allows you to rotate out these magazines. They catch on the front and then lock on the back. So as you're popping them in there, they kind of snap in there. So let's throw that magazine off to the side. Really what I want to do is a trigger pull test on this thing. All right, so gun's empty. Safety is, oh, did I leave it? Oh, yeah, safety's off. And let's do a trigger pull test on this thing. And we're at six and a half pounds. Pretty typical for a gun like this. Six and a half pounds. Oh, let's reset our trigger pull gauge here. And six and a half pounds. I don't know how that well it's going to show. That's six pounds, uh, five ounces. So um, right around there is where you're going to get with this gun. Uh, it, it's got a little bit of creep to it. I don't know if you can see there, but let me just rack it and run it again there. I did get a little bit of trigger slap with this thing on a couple of rounds, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, but our take up is there, a little bit of creep, and then she finally goes. So um, this might be helped with, I only, I've only fired a few hundred rounds out of this thing. Uh, this trigger pull might be helped by just by shooting it. Uh, but, uh, or, you know, uh, might also be helped by polishing up some of the parts and that kind of thing. Now the charging handle is quite small, and that's something I don't mind on a on a rifle like this. Something that's designed to be used and used and that kind of thing. Um, I don't see the point of having like a really large charging handle. Uh, it's small, it's quite usable, quite easy to uh, to pull back and forth. And at the range, I had really no issues to to speak of with it. Now just on the other side of the gun here, we've got the safety. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit rough here, but it works just fine. It just rotates all the way around to be used. Uh, which could be, you know, a little bit hard to use. It's, but it, but at least it's on the right side. It's on the right side. Your right thumb can get to it pretty easily, and you just flip it uh, uh, all the way to one side or all the way to the other to uh, to use. I'd imagine that the fully auto one would have used like a, a 90 degree for one of these would be full, one of them would be auto, one would be semi, right? Now, right in the middle of this gun, we have a rotating drum that uh, sets your distance. So. You flip this guy over, and that sets how far uh, you're zeroed for. So it's kind of interesting. It's actually meant to be viewed from the back, so you're supposed to be looking back on this thing. There'll be a number on both sides of it that says what the uh, what the zero is. So at the first one, you're set for 100, 200, 3, 4, and 5. So 
Uh, great little uh, rear sight, very easy to use and very uh, positive. One of the things that some people have noted is that this thing has a, a hood over top the rear sight, which is a little bit odd. And you can see there that it's got that hood and then the sight is actually inside there. Some people who really don't like this hood, what they end up doing is just chopping it off. They dremel out one side, then the other, and it comes right off and then you're stuck with the traditional rear sight. Kind of getting towards the front here, we have our fore end. Uh, we've got a lower and an upper cover. Um, we also have this uh, really cool uh, uh, gas setting system on here. Let me just show you how that works. Now you just grab a cartridge and you pop it in and then you rotate it over and that's how you change your settings on your gas. So very, uh, very easy system to use there. We have a cleaning rod just underneath the barrel here. This cleaning rod is really short. <laughs> There is an extension that comes on the uh, uh, in the buttstock cleaning kit, but uh, boy, this is a this is a pretty short little cleaning rod here. <laughs> You're gonna have to get at it from both ends to uh, to do to use this thing. And finally, we're left with the uh, this impressive uh, rifle grenade launcher on the front here. Not really useful here in Canada because we don't can't have rifle grenades, but uh, pretty cool anyways, right? This is not actually the barrel. This is a cover that's sitting on top of the barrel. Now your barrel is actually way down inside there. You see that right about here, that barrel is, uh, is sitting there. So this is just the grenade launcher cover, uh, whereas the barrel is sitting inside there. All right, let's go ahead and disassemble this thing. And to disassemble it, you need your disassembly tool. Uh, you're gonna push in on the uh, button here at the rear, that's your dust cover button. And then that should let you pop your dust cover off. That's gonna expose the recoil spring, guide, and bolt carrier group. This recoil spring will just, here, let me see if I can get you to get zoomed in there. Uh, we'll just push out there and then out she comes. There's your recoil spring and guide. Then your bolt will pull, come to the rear and pop out. This bolt incidentally uh, just uh, has a guide in here. You just go whoop, turn it out like that and out she goes. So there's the machining cut that we used to pull the bolt out. If you're expecting more for back here, I'm sorry, that's it. <laughs> you know, the barrel is is, uh, is right there. The uh, locking recesses are right here. So this is one of the few firearms where you can actually get to the locking recesses in there and stuck up some like way, uh, way in there. They're actually quite easy to get to and clean. Uh, our hammer and assembly are all back here. So there's all that action back there. There's our hammer and all the other things. So if you want to see the hammer, why don't we go ahead and push the trigger on that one. And there's our hammer right there. So a pretty beefy unit. It's going to have no problem striking off some, uh, some pretty heavy duty stuff. Let's push that guy back in. Now I'm a stubborn guy and I tried actually taking this thing off without looking up the instructions. There are no instructions. <laughs> you know, the Type 81 is not really found much in Canada here. But uh, actually what you need to do is kind of rotate this all the way to one side. And then here's the magic part. This left side pulls out a little bit. And then you can rotate it to a magic number that doesn't actually exist. Ooh. And then rotate a little bit back and forth until you find the spot where this thing comes off. Boom. There we go. Uh, there's our uh, receiver cover there, front receiver cover, front receiver cover, front uh, fore end cover, whatever. Um, this guy here is going to come off uh, from the front. So this whole thing comes off. You're going to push um, right, oh yeah, sorry, a little rotate this guy here and then it'll push off and then you can kind of pull the whole thing out. So let's get zoomed in on that. And that will break down into this cup, which is the, our, our adjuster piece. You can see here the gas ports that uh, are lined up to uh, give more gas or less gas. So that's our number two, that's our number one, and number zero has, well, nothing. And there's our piston and piston spring to uh, pull it back into place. So all in all, pretty easy system to break down. Uh, the barrel and gas system is chrome lined, so fantastic news for guys who shoot corrosive out there. You should still clean in here, get a, a pipe cleaner and uh, get it down into that hole and clean out that hole. Clean off your piston and clean off this cup inside because that's all where 
uh, those corrosive salts are going to get to definitely. Um, not really going to be any corrosive salts getting out past there, so not too much worry there, but I still would clean your bolt and all that kind of stuff if you are shooting corrosive. Now to reinstall, we're going to grab this guy here. It's got this little like uh, um, notch here. That's not a notch. Lug. Lug there. And let's go pop that guy on. It's going to go back into that hole that it came from. And it's going to lock in once we turn it. Now it won't want to come out. So it only turns once it's got that lug exposed. I'm going to turn it to the number one because that's the best one, the one that we want to use most of the time. I'm going to go ahead and pop this guy on. And I'll rotate this guy until it's at the spot where it wants to be, which is with the number one facing up. So if you've got the number one facing up, you've probably got it on the right setting. And then I'm going to rotate it back to production level and now it won't come off. Now for the bolt, we just need this angled piece in here to match up with the uh, bolt carrier. So I'm just going to rotate it until it's in there. And you know it's in there when you push forward and it rotates into place. And now it doesn't really want to come out. So now I know it's in the right spot. I'm going to go ahead and pop it into my receiver. And it just kind of fits, fits right into there and then it'll just go all the way to the front. Next I've got my recoil spring and carrier and they go into that hole in the back of this thing. Uh, this carrier, this carrier has these notches on here and guides and that's what's going to allow it to, I'm just going to push it in a little bit here and it locks in place uh, on the back here. You might need to like kind of angle a little bit until it's in there. Now on the dust cover, I just want to show you something, oh, I'm going to have to actually turn it the other way. Now on this dust cover, there's actually something interesting. You need to get this part here in a little notch right here. So that's really super duper important. Uh, so I'd look to get that guy in there. There we go. Do you see how it just got in there? And now it's actually on the right spot back here. Use my assembly disassembly tool to push this guy forward. Not too much, just a little bit. Now if you end up with something that looks like this, you're not, this dust cover is not actually in place. It's actually caught on the rear lip here. It needs to be jumped up and over to, uh, to be in place. So watch that button there. If it's not all the way out, it's not in the right spot. And now we can see it's installed in the right place because this thing's sticking out quite a bit more and this uh, dust cover is in front of that rear rail on the receiver. Now in terms of usability, there's a couple of interesting things. Uh, magazines uh, rock and lock just like an AK-47. Because we're dealing with stamped steel here, it's, it's very easy to pop them in there and there's no mistaking when you've got it in there. It locks in there very securely and it's very easy to use this toggle at the, at the rear. So not really much to talk about there. Great magazines, a uh, little bit heavy. You know, the uh, VZ-80s use an aluminum uh, magazine. These are stamped steel. They're uh, quite a bit beefier. You can really feel the weight in here. You can really, you know, do some damage with this thing. Um, but it also feels like it's gonna be a substantial magazine that'll last for a, a while too. So. Uh, fantastic magazines. Um, you know, there is no stripper clip guide that's uh, that's milled into this thing, but I found that you can load these with a stripper clip simply by pressing the stripper clip right near the rear here and just boop, popping them right in there. You just pop in your five rounds and away you go. Uh, the safety, here let me just turn this way, is <laughs> pretty far. <laughs> so it's not, a, it's not a particularly fast safety to use, uh, but you can, uh, you can use it uh, just with your right hand thumb. I wonder, can I? Oh yeah, I can, I can rotate it all the way around uh, with my finger. It is a full 180 degrees, so uh, it's, it's not like super fast like your 90 degree uh, AR-15, or even some of the AR-15s have 45 degree really, really quick uh, uh, safety selectors as well. Uh, the charging handle, you can go under or you can go over. You'll see in the video, I think I go over. And uh, there is no bolt release, you just re let go on the uh, charging handle and release and slingshot it. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of usability. Uh, 
Now, the sights themselves, like I mentioned, are quite short radius. This is about 12 inches here, and that's because the Chinese have this, uh, um, not rocket launcher, grenade launcher, <laughs> there we go, on the end here. Now, this is dedicated so that they can put uh, um, rifle grenades on here and have them fired off with, uh, with the use of a blank, which is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, it's not super useful for Canadians because we don't have <laughs> rifle grenades. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I found the uh, gas selector here interesting. This is a, a 762 by 39 cartridge, and you can just use it to grab on there and change that gas selector from one to zero to, if it's really muddy and dirty, you could swap it over to number two there. So it's, uh, it's very easy to uh, use a field expedient tool, like a rifle cartridge, <laughs> to, uh, to change that over. Um, aside from that, you know, the, uh, the, the rear sights here uh, are very easy to use as well. You just kind of sight down there and pop them uh, continually up there. So from one to 500 meters is very quick to, uh, to pop in between uh, with that rear sight. And uh, that's about it in terms of usability. So pretty standard fare for a, a red rifle that's uh, semi-automatic. So, is the Type 81 worth it uh, in Canada? Uh, now, we've got a couple of firearms that would compete with this. The uh, SKS kind of competes with it, but not really. The SKS is, uh, doesn't have a pistol grip, doesn't have magazines, um, doesn't have nearly the AK look that uh, something like this have. And I believe that that is a reason why some people are buying these, because it is the closest thing we can get to an AK in the US, in, the, uh, in Canada. In the US, you could just, you know, just turn around and buy an AK. Um, it's quite roughly uh, machined. Some of the different parts on here are a little bit rough, but uh, <laughs> I actually had this out at the range uh, and some uh, Chinese guys were out there and they're like, wow, that one looks really nice. That's a really nice Type 81. And it's because, you know, everyone that they had to shoot uh, in, the, in the army there were just beaten to heck because <laughs> they have so many recruits. They thought this one looked fantastic. And they said that the uh, machining on there was, was pretty typical. That's, uh, that's just what they, that's the, the style they do, right? And I think I think with, uh, with some of your rougher AK-47s, it's going to be pretty similar as well. Um, so, and in, above all else, super functional, right? So we're just talking about um, finish on some of the parts. The safety here particularly has like some rough finishing around it, but it works. It swivels around just fine and it's actually not even that hard to move around. So uh, the so functionality is fine. It's just some of the parts are just a little bit rough looking, right? Now the main competitor to this firearm in Canada will be the VZ58 and the CZ858. Right now they're running around $1,300, $1,400. Uh, so they are a little bit more expensive uh, than this guy. And they come with their own little quirks. The, the receiver's a little bit shorter. Um, the safety on those ones is on the right hand side, which kind of sucks. At least this one's on the left hand where your, th where your thumb's supposed to be. Um, the sight radius on the VZ58 is a lot longer, which Pros and cons, you know, it's going to be more accurate uh, for long range shooting. Uh, this is faster to get on target because um, it's shorter. and It's just easier to see both of them, right? Uh, so some pros and cons on that one. Um, and this one's, you know, 30, 40% cheaper. So it's got that going for it as well. Currently, there aren't many aftermarket parts for this thing. Um, in my article, I'll continue to uh, update it and have uh, any aftermarket parts that come out. Uh, there are a couple of manufacturers here in Canada that kind of cater to the Canadian market. Um, the guys that do M14.ca and T97 uh, are the guys I'm thinking of. Uh, they typically make some really cool aftermarket parts and I'd be really interested to see if they make something for this because um, right now there is a quad uh, four in for it, but I would really like to see a, uh, uh, a receiver or something that replaces this guy over here that you can uh, use with a scope that's secure. Um, there is so much space up uh, at the back here uh, to mount like a compact scope or red dot that it would be really interesting uh, to get something like that back here. Uh, normally with a lot of these firearms, uh, the um, uh, action is just a little bit further to the rear and there's just not a lot of room there to, to play with, but uh, there is some room to play with on this one. So it'd be interesting to see uh, kind of what the Canadians come up with. So when I was shooting this thing at the range, uh, reliability, 100%, uh, I, I didn't see a single failure. I ran about four different kinds of ammo through it and all of them ran just fine. They all ended up locking the bolt to the rear on the last round. They all 
uh, ran just fine. Um, accuracy wise, I printed two groups. One of them was right around five MOA and the other one was around four. That was a, a little bit better than I was expecting. I really think that it's, I, I, I can't do better with these sights. Um, if I were to get a little bit longer of a sighting uh, radius or if I could mount this thing with an optic, I'd be really interested to see what the accuracy is like because uh, I don't think it'll stop there. I think it'll go a little bit tighter than four MOA, maybe like three, some, somewhere around there will be really typical for an AK-47 and I think would be really typical for a Type 81 as well. So again, that was the Type 81. Uh, we've been waiting for these things in Canada with bated breath and they're finally here. Uh, I wanted to thank Tactical Imports to, for uh, sending me this one to uh, just a review and uh, kind of take a look at this thing um, a little bit. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting firearm and I think uh, a lot of you will uh, definitely want to shoot one if you see it at the range to uh, see what you think of it. Thanks for watching.